Oh, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about optimization. And in particular, we're going to be learning a very important algorithm for optimization called gradient descent. So whenever we're talking about optimization, we're generally trying to either minimize something or maximize something. And, uh, and so you've probably seen this in different cases. For example, um, let, let's say I have some sort of, uh, let's say I have some sort of function um, f and I have y equals f of x. Um, what I probably want to do, or I might want to do, is try to find the x value that gives me either the smallest or the largest y. And, um, and, and so that's one example of a minimization problem that if you've taken a calculus course, you've probably seen many forms of that. Um, other cases is, well, let's say that we are trying to find the best possible coefficients for some sort of line fit, right? So I want to know, well, what slope and intercept should I have for my, uh, for my line? And so what am I trying to minimize there? Well, I'm trying to minimize the average difference or error uh, between the data and the line. I might be squaring that to really kind of penalize points that are far off the line. Um, a third case, uh, an example of an optimization problem that's really important for machine learning, but we are going to talk more about um, in this course, is that in deep learning, you have all these neurons and they have these um, edges connecting them and those edges have weights. And uh, the problem of deep learning is trying to figure out, well, how should we be weighting the different connections between neurons? And, uh, and so how can we choose those weights so as to minimize the mistakes made by the neural network? So how can we do this? Well, uh, in calculus, if I, I'm going back to this first case where y equals f of x, um, if f of x is a continuous function, what we could do is we could try to take the derivative of it and set the derivative to zero and then see, well, uh, at any of these places where the slope is flat, am I minimizing y? Right now, I'm not trying to assume you've um, taken calculus, but I'm maybe showing the same idea uh, when we're actually doing computation. And, and so with computation, there's two ways we might do it. One is that uh, you know computers are fast, and I could just try a whole bunch of different values, and uh, and see which one gives me the smallest y. The other thing uh, is borrowing some ideas from calculus, uh, where we're going to be looking at those gradients. Gradients are just a derivative evaluated at a specific point, and, and that's trying to kind of help us rather than uh, checking all of these items. Maybe I start with you know negative four point eight. And, uh, and based on these gradients, I maybe I'll figure out, well, is it a good idea to increase x or, or decrease x? So, so let me start with the intuitive picture. Um, imagine that you're hiking in the mountains, and, and so this is you right here, and, uh, and your goal is to find your way down, or at least as, as low as you can go. Um, so it's a minimization problem. How low can we go in the mountains? Right, And I can see that that's the lowest point right there. And, uh, and let's pretend that uh, the mountains are foggy, right? So I can't really see the shape of them. I only know where I am right now. And, uh, and so what might my strategy be? Well, I can look at the ground beneath my feet and I can see, well, what is the slope here, right? And, uh, and I can see, okay, I have a positive slope. And, and if I have a positive slope, that means that you know, increasing x will probably increase my y. That's the opposite of what I wanna do. So because my slope is positive, and I'm trying to get down, I, I think I should move to the left, right? So I might do that. And uh, so I take some steps in that direction. And then I might do it again. I can see, well, the slope is still positive, so I should take some more steps to the left. I might go there. Um, and, and so I could keep doing this and hopefully land at the bottom. Uh, now, now the analogy to hiking doesn't work perfectly because when you're hiking and you're going from point A to point B, uh, you have to cross all the points in between, right? But in gradient descent, we're kind of moving in these jumps. So, so one of the things I could go wrong is I could jump and, and maybe I actually overshoot uh, that minimum. Maybe I land on this side. Um, so that might be okay. Well, uh, maybe if I see that I've overshot, maybe I should uh, kind of start heading back in the direction I came, but maybe with some smaller steps. Um, the other problem though is, well, there might be multiple minimum, right? Uh, minima. You know, maybe I end up here. You can see other places where I could get stuck, right? So this is a problem where I have to think about uh, when, when using this strategy, right? There's mathematical reasons this can come up as well. Um, other cases where the analogy breaks down to hiking is that, well, you might have many dimensions. Uh, if I'm in three dimensions, that actually kind of makes sense, right? I mean, I could imagine a, a, a 3D topography. Um, but eventually, right, we might have cases where, you know, y equals f of x1, x2, x3, all the way up to xn, right? So, so I don't try to have that clear picture, but, but we can still have this strategy. We can say, well, uh, for respect, with respect to each of these, 
uh, which one's kind of tweaking up or tweaking down will make my y value smaller, right? So I can do that. Okay, so, so let's think about the function we're trying to uh, minimize um, in another context. So I'm, I'm trying to fit my line um, to my data. Right? Maybe I have some scatter plot and I want to fit a line to it. And so I have to figure out both the slope and intercept um, of that line. Right, so, so here, um, you know, there's one function, which is y equals f of x, where f of x equals slope times x plus intercept. Uh, that, that is my fit line right there. But that's not really what we um, are trying to minimize. Right? I mean, that's a straight line, so really there is no minimum. Right? I mean, I can keep going left, 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 or right, 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 depending on the slope. Um, so when we're trying to do this minimization, we're actually doing something different. Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize the mean squared error. And, uh, and you can think of the mean squared error actually as a, as a function. Um, if you give me inputs of a slope and an intercept, well, then I could draw a line and I could tell you what the mean squared error is. And, and so really what we're going to be trying to minimize if we're trying to do a line fit is, is this error that we get back. How can I choose slope and intercept so as to uh, minimize that error? And, and we're going to use gradient descent for that. We're going to try a slope and intercept and then see how I should tweak it. How should I move the line? And, um, and so I raised this issue before that uh, in some cases of gradient descent, there's multiple minima and you can get stuck in one. Here though, we're actually lucky, at least for this line fit problem, because uh, this function happens to be uh, what we call a convex function. Right? It's, kind of, um, it, it's kind of sloping up on all sides and there's just this nice you know, point one kind of minima right in the center. And so we're gonna be able to solve this problem quite well um, using gradient descent. So eventually I'm going to write code to do this um, uh, kind of automatically for us, but I want to do it slowly and manually first just so you can see what's going on. So, so let me head over here to uh, my notebook here, and, um, and, and I have some function here that uh, you don't really have to understand. It's trying to help me kind of visualize what's going on. Uh, what's more interesting is that I have this mystery module, right? If you, if you come over here, you can see that I have this mystery.py. And uh, to keep it mysterious, I'm not going to open that. You just need to know that it has some function um, f inside of it. And, and so let, let me just try some f values, right? So I'm going to say like um, f of 0 is uh, 6.36. Let, let me try like f of 10. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find what I should put here to get the smallest y value back. So if I try f of 10, uh, that was a bad idea, right? That kind of took me um, higher. What if I try like f of negative 10? Even worse idea. What if I try like one, is that better? That's a little bit better, right? So my goal is to try to figure out, well, what uh, what value can I put here to really get the smallest value, value back? And, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plot these input values on the x-axis and these output values on a y-axis and kind of keep track of the different things I'm guessing. And I'm gonna try to use gradient descent to make smart guesses. Okay, so I have this uh, little uh, figure down here, and, um, and, and what I'm going to do is, well, let, let, me, let me do a guess again. I'm going to say x equals 0, y equals f of x, and, uh, and then what I want to do is I want to draw a point down here. I want to show where my guess is, and then I'm also going to draw um, a line through that point, which is going to tell me what the slope is. So, so I have this function up here, which does that for me. This is kind of just going to plot a little line with some slope at a particular point. So, so I could do something like this. I could say, um, uh, I, I could say, well, I have my x, my y, and I, I don't know, let's just say the slope is, is one for now. Right, so I could see, great, that, that's up here. That's a slope at, at, at one. If I do a negative one, well, then it slopes down. And, uh, and, and my goal, right, is to actually figure out how to compute that correctly for my function, okay? And, and so how can I do that? Well. Um, I can use um, PyTorch, right? Uh, if I want to, I can, instead of just having these be regular floats, I could make them tensors, right? So if I head back up here, you can see I said from torch import tensor. And, uh, and so I'm going to turn X into a tensor like this. I'm going to say X is a tensor. And, uh, and, and then kind of where I'm headed is that I want to uh, get the gradient back out of that, right? What is the slope or the gradient? And, and so the slope is going to be, maybe I call it the gradient, is going to be x dot gradient. And, and that's why I may want to plot down here, right? So I'm going to try to do this. 
you know, my slope of line equals the gradient. So I'm gonna try running that and it's gonna fail. Um, and, and the first issue I see is that, well, you know, it's expecting real numbers, but but I have a none type, right? And that was trying happening with this slope right here, right? So it's trying to print the slope on the top for me. And, and so uh, my issue, right? Why is, why is this none? Maybe I can just show that it's none. That's very clear. It's none. The, the reason is that I have to, you know, you, you can imagine I could call different functions based on, right? What if I had something like this? So if I said like g of x, um, do I want the slope of, uh, of the g function or the, or the f function, right? So since the f function returns y, I need to say this, i dot backward, right? That was one of the things we have to do. So I can try to get this gradient. So I'm gonna run this. And, and there's a couple other issues I'm just trying to kind of go through. And, um, and, and it's saying, well, I, I'm not requiring a gradient. Right, so I, I can't just do this on my, one of my tensors unless I tell PyTorch from the beginning that I, I want it to be tracked, right? So back here I should say requires gradient like so. And then th there's one last issue and that is tensors can only have uh, floating points, right? So, you know, there's different ways I could do that. I could say like point zero or um, just I'm looking ahead to what I want to write coming soon. I could just try to convert that integer to a float and, and I do that and uh, and then now what is my now what is my problem? Um, so why am I still getting a gradient of zero? Because um, right, so this is still none, and, and the reason is that I need to actually call backward before I I look at that. Of course, great, and so I can see that that's how how the the function is at that point, right? At that point. The function is, is trying to slope down pretty sharply. And, and actually, I could just look at this number. It's negative uh, 2.44. Okay, so I can do that. And and so, I mean, looking at the line, right, if I'm trying to get uh, lower, I can see I should go to the right. Um, I could also just figure that out by the, the, by the slope, right? I mean, if the slope is negative, then that means bigger x gives smaller y. And so, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bundle this all up. I'm going to say... Uh, try x, define try x. I'm going to take an x value, and, um, and and here I'm just trying to pass this in because I want to do a bunch of guesses, right? Actually, I'm going to plot it too, right? So let me just try to run this again to make sure it still works. Try x of zero, and um, that's good. And, and then just the way I've set this up, right? I'm not trying to look at the code for this plot gradient thing, but I, I've set it up so I can do something like, um, you know, if I go to like 0 0.5 next. Um, it, it's trying to draw all my guesses, and, and the most recent guess it will draw with the red. So l let me just actually do one more thing. M maybe I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, uh, have some values here, like a list of values, and I'm going to say for x and values, I'm going to do that. And, and so really then I can try to make this even simpler, right? I can just, um, you know, try these different things, right? So I say 0 0.5, then right, I'm drawing both of them. So I could see I should probably move farther to the to the right. So maybe I'm gonna jump over to like, I don't know, three. And uh, and after three, well, I see it needs to be a little bit to the left. So maybe I'll go to like, you know, 1.5. Okay, a little bit too much up. So maybe I should go to like 2.5 now, a tiny bit more to the right. Maybe I'll try like 2.75. You, you, you can see that um, when the line is really steep, I want to jump a lot. And then when it's like pretty flat, uh, I know I'm getting close. So I want to move kind of a smaller amount. And, and that actually looks like it's probably a minimum, right? I can see that it's very flat there. And, uh, and so that might be the minimum for this function. Um, and, uh, and so, and of course, I don't know for sure, right? I mean, it's possible that there was some other minimum out here, right? Um, and so it depends, right? If there's one minima, I probably found it. If there's multiple ones, then it might be a little bit trickier. And, and there's different ways people solve that. I mean, they might try to run it multiple times from kind of different starting points. So you can do some exercises now, and then we're gonna talk about a little bit more about how to automate all of this.